Welcome back. About one year ago, I made a total of six videos, uh, one basic and five detailed videos about this QST QMC 5883L 3-axis magnetic sensor, uh, basically a digital compass chip. And that thing was dirt cheap. I spent five bucks for it. For the whole breakout board that is and it promised to enable you to have one to two degree compass heading accuracy and at the very end in the fifth detail video i was able to reach a one degree to one and a half degree accuracy with a 250 sample median filter <coughs> which had a <laughs> reaction time of over 12 seconds so basically as a real digital compass that thing was completely unusable uh cut to the last video here and link in the description in uh, the description for the last video you find links to all the videos about that thing Enter the stage, the MEMSIC MMC5983MA 3-axis magnetic sensor. That's another beast. First of all, it's more expensive. The chip alone will set you back a little less than five bucks. And this evaluation kit I have here costs uh, almost 24 euros. However, it promises you a heading accuracy of plus minus 0.5 degrees and it comes actually with specified noise levels, very low noise levels in the data sheet. In this video, we will have a look at that set data sheet at the evaluation board that should be in here. And we will try to get the whole thing up and running with an Arduino. Enjoy. I really should have made an unboxing video for that thing. So let's open the box and oh, that looks very nice. And there's the board and it comes in of course a little ESD bag which is open which is open uh, don't stop the video right now and there we have the evaluation board we have eight pins in total on this side we have an uh, interrupt out I assume pin SCL and SDA that's your uh, I squared C interface. And then we have an SDO. Uh, these pins are probably multi-purpose, either SDA, SCL for I squared C, or a slave data out, slave data in, and slave clock for SPI operation. And then we have the chip select pin also for SPI operation. And then we have an VDDIO, so IO supply voltage, and VDD, general supply voltage, and ground pin. But let's have a look on the documentation for that thing. Here's the documentation for the breakout board. They tell us right away that we should <laughs> refer to the actual data sheet for more information. And they give us a table with the pins. We already talked about that. There are these two multi-purpose pins. So either green for SPI, that would be a SPI a slave clock and slave data in, or in blue I squared C, slave data and slave clock. And then we have two more SPI pins for slave data out and the chip select, and we have an input uh, output interrupt output and we have the two power supply pins vdd on ground what's marked on the little breakout board here as vdd io is not connected and i just verified that visually there's really no trace going off from that vdd io pin there's even a little schematic of that breakout board here and we see here that pin 2 which is marked VDDIO not being connected but instead the VDDIO and the VDD pin of the chip 
being connected to the same output pin here at the board. We also saw that these two C1 and C2 capacitors are populated at that board and there were, there were unpopulated positions for that R1 and R2 resistor here, which are obviously the I squared C pull-ups for the SDA and SCL line. However, there was a populated R3 on there with the value 010 and an R unpopulated R4 and R5 position 2. So uh, I guess that 010 is just a bridge and uh, yeah, they're using that breakout board for uh, different chips. Again, on the board, there's a populated C1 and C2 capacitor. There's that uh, 010R3 uh, resistor, the unpopulated R4 and R5, which are not even <coughs> mentioned in the circuit diagram, and the unpopulated positions for an R1 and R2 2.7K pull-up resistors for the I2C lines. Let's have a look into the datasheet then. The highlights. Plus minus 8G full scale range, uh, that's the usual for a compass chip, 18 bits operation, not only 16, but 18 bits. 0.4 milligauss total RMS noise. And that's the best value in a data sheet I found for these Hall element based magnetic compasses. You can get chips that are better, but these are no longer based on Hall elements, but they are really using three different coils to measure the magnetic field of the earth and they also in another price range. <laughs> Enable setting accuracy of plus minus 0.5 degrees. We talked ab already about that. Uh, output data rate up to 1000 Hertz. Uh, I don't need that, but that's a lot. And degaussing with built-in set reset function. So that thing can eliminate when you boot it up any residual magnetic field that might have built up. A uh, lot of blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> output uh, data ready interrupt output, of course. Uh, then the I squared C interface uh, is fast mode, 400 kilohertz, that's good. 3.0 volt single low power supply. Uh, I hope it will run with 3.3 volts too. We will see that in the details. And of course, it has an alternative SPI interface available. Here's the block diagram, very tiny. Uh, so you have here your three Hall elements for the X, Y, and Z axis, and then you have some signal processing, and then the results are stored in three registers, X, Y, and Z, which you can read via I squared C and SPI. I'm sure there are also some registers that you can write to set different options. Uh, clock generator, blah, 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 set reset control, that was that decoder stuff, voltage reference, test and buffer switches, uh, temperature sensor. I think I skipped that. It has a built-in temperature sensor for temperature compensation too. Maximum supply voltage is 3.6 volts. So I want to run that thing on 3.3 volts on an Arduino. So that's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> supply current, okay. Uh, yeah, not even half a milliamp. And yeah, the uh, there are these BW from 0, 0 to 1, 1. These are bits in some of the control registers and they control how long a measurement can take or will take, meaning how much filtering the chip does internally. That's important, that ranges from 8 milliseconds to 0.5 milliseconds. That's important because if we go further down, yeah, our operating temperature range minus 40 to 105 degrees, we're golden there. Linearity error 0.1% of full scale, that's all very, very nice. Repeatability error 0.1% of full scale, alignment error, and so on and so on until we come here to the RMS noise. And 
<coughs> the promised 0.4 milligauss RMS noise you only get if you take the filtering to the max and then each measurement takes 8 milliseconds and uh, yeah <clears throat> you don't get 1000 measurements per second out of that thing but that's okay for my application. A uh, new value every 8 milliseconds is more than I need. There is a whole lot more information here in the data sheet but uh, yeah we will come back to that when we actually need it. Absolute maximum rating, so supply voltage from minus 0 0.4 to plus 3.6 volts. Again, we're golden here with 3.3 volts from our Arduino. On page 10, respectively 11 of the datasheet, we find four typical application circuits for four different uh, modes, operation modes, I squared C dual supply operation. We can forget about that. That's not supported by our little breakout board. SPI dual supply operation is also not supported. So we can concentrate on I squared C single supply connection and SPI single supply connection. I squared C single supply connection, no surprises here, but we have to bind the SPI chip select pin to VDD to indicate that we are actually want to use I squared C and the SPI slave data out chip is just left dangling here. Please note that the pull-up resistors here for our I squared C, SDI and S clock lines are not on the breakout board. At least they are not populated. For SPI single supply operation, you just feed your SPI signals in the four pins that are for SPI. So slave data out, uh, slave data in, slave clock and chip select. Now that we know that the thing will run with 3.3 volts and we have an idea how to connect it to our Arduino, uh, the question is, is there an Arduino library available? And yes, there is, but only one. At least I only found one library and that's the SparkFun, SparkFun MMC 5983M, a magnetometer Arduino library. What else? Um, we will probably go into the details a little bit, but I want to point out here this little remark uh, added last year. Edit SPI support dash partial. Okay, uh, not that this matters to us because I want to use I squared C, but this library does somehow also support SPI, but maybe not completely. Anyway, let's have a look at the header file if we like that library. Sometimes uh, you don't like it. Uh, you know me. So yeah, here all the includes and we need the uh, SparkFun IO library and Arduino library constants in different files. Yeah, I can live with that. Uh, lots of private functions here, nothing too bad. Then a default constructor and a default destructor, okay. Oh, uh, you can set an error callback function. That's not too bad, I like that. Uh, error code string, also not too bad. Uh, begin, that is there two different begins here. One obviously for uh, I squared C with a two wire object and then here one with uh, for SPI. And then you get the usual is connected, get temperature. Yeah, we know this thing has a temperature sensor software set. Enable interrupt, disable interrupt. That's obviously for the interrupt pin is interrupt enable. Yeah, query. Uh, what else we have here? Oh, enable three wire SPI and disable three wire SPI. We don't care about that. Is three wire SPI, yeah, yeah. no SPI. Uh, perform set operation and perform reset operation. Okay, enable automatic set reset. Okay, whatever that is, we will dive into those details in the first, the details video, I guess. 
is automatic set okay enable x channel disable okay channel disable enable for xyz set build a filter bandwidth we talked about that okay anyway uh yeah a complete library using i don't know if it's really using all of the functions but uh it doesn't look that bad so let's use it the library is available within the uh, Arduino Library Manager in the version 1.1.1. That was also the one we just saw on GitHub. Great. And that library comes with a bunch of examples, uh, seven to be exact, starting from a simple measurement, digital compass, or oh, we will try that, a continuous measurement, simple measurement, digital compass, two, uh, uh, fast continuous measurement and sensor offset. Hmm. Let's start with a digital compass and um, yeah, load that to our Arduino and connect everything up. Everything is wired up now nicely. So we have our ground connection to ground and we have a 3.3 volt going to our VDD. Uh, VDDIO has no connection. We already talked about that and the SPI chip select is bridged to our VDD. So that should put the whole thing into I2C mode. We have a two 2.7K as was mentioned in the data sheet pull up resistors here on our chip clock, uh, slave clock and slave data lines and the slave data line is going over here to the slave data pin and the slave clock line is going over to the slave clock pin. Let's fire that thing up. And right out of the bat it's working. And I want you to note how little noise there is on the signal here. So yeah, uh, uh, it's fluctuating between five, three, I see a six in between. Can I get a six? Nah, not really. So uh, it's fluctuating about two tenths of a degree right off the box, no additional filtering, just with that <clears throat> SparkFun library. No calibration at all. And that's the next big surprise. Uh, I have placed here a little compass so you can see where north is and yeah, okay, we're, we're 10 degrees off. But without calibration, that's absolutely okay. And if we go to 90 degrees approximately, yeah, seven, eight degrees off, 270 degrees. I mean, we will make uh, precision measurements in the details videos, of course. Yeah, four degrees off and if we go to 180 degrees approximately, yeah, we are at 180 degrees without, without, again, if you followed the series about the QMC chip, <laughs> without any calibration. That's really, really impressive uh, right out of the gate. Ah, I like it. Let's go over that SparkFun example real quick. So we include here wire and the SparkFun library. Then we instantiate, <clears throat> that's the class name, okay. Uh, our chip, the object for our chip, we make a serial begin and we make a little serial print that was already scrolled out of the screen. And if Mac begin is false, there's something wrong then you get a error message and it goes into an endless loop here. And then we do a soft reset, whatever that does, we will see in the details videos. 
there will be several of them. And then we say we are connected and then we have here some 32-bit uh, unsigned integers for the raw values of the X, Y and Z sensor. Then we have doubles for the normalized values. Uh, please note a double is only a float in the Arduino environment, so it doesn't really matter. It's only 32-bit, whatever you want to do. And then we do, I mean, that's self-explanatory, uh, get measurement x, y, z into the raw values. And then we normalize these values into a range between plus minus 1.0. And we do that for all three values, uh, for x, y, and z. And then we calculate the heading using the Arcus Tangens 2 function. And this doesn't deliver, uh, yeah, <clears throat> a result in degree, plus, but uh, something between plus pi to minus pi and we convert that in degrees and then this is printed out. So really straight forward. Uh, by the way, the whole Arcus Tangens 2 thing to actually calculate a compass heading from uh, two sensors uh, is explained in the, th um, in the third details video about the QMC chip uh, card here, link in the description. Let's try another example then, shall we? So the examples are not <clears throat> that interesting. Uh, this basically gives us the uh, raw values and the values in Gauss on the serial monitor. Uh, let me stop the auto scroll so the flickering goes back. Uh, but again, I want you to note how little, how little the raw values fluctuate, really. This is a, a few least significant bits noise we have on here. So that's really nice. And then we have our Gauss values and uh, I activate the auto scroll again. And of course, if we move our compass, I'm doing that off screen here. Uh, forgot to switch on the other camera, then things are changing. So yeah, really nice. And the code for that example is also very trivial. Uh, yeah, it starts exactly the same. Yeah, uh, initialize your serial interface, check if the chip is there. And uh, yeah, we already scrolled over that. Uh, get the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, then we go into a loop. We have again our six values here for x, y, and z current value that is an unsigned integer 32 and normalized we get our measurements this time with uh, three methods each measurement for its own and then uh, you saw that it's printed out the integer value and then we convert these 18-bit unsigned integer values into a double which should B after it's multiplied by 8. You remember full scale is 8 Gauss for that chip gives us the field value, the magnetic field value, or at least the component in x, y, and z direction in Gauss. That's it. That's it. Yeah, the, the examples are not very <coughs> extensive. Uh, there's also nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, with calibration and stuff. So we will have to do all that by ourselves. That's it for today. We had a little squiz on the data sheet of that thing, and it's, uh, well, <clears throat> at least according to the data sheet, impressive performance. Uh, we learned how to wire that thing up to an Arduino, the different modes it can, it supports I2C and SPI, and we found a readily available library. Uh, the examples are a little bit moot, um, but yeah, it's working very well. Next time, <laughs> the details one. 
uh, we will start writing our own library for that thing because uh, never trust a library uh, from the internet. Uh, well, we could look into the code how the library is implemented, but anyway, uh, I think it's a little bit heavy with that uh, SPI and I squared C support and then including some uh, I.O. library from SparkFun. I, I don't like that. Uh, we will write our own library just purely for I squared C. And then we will add some important functions over the different details videos. Like for example, calibration. Because while that thing is basically, compared to the QMC <coughs> chip, uh, noiseless, um, it does need calibration, okay? Otherwise you won't get uh, very good values, uh, very good uh, compass readings out of that. Till then, bye.